All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Niren Yadav, a proud PMM scholar from the Product Marketing Alliance. And today I'm thrilled to bring you an insightful conversation with someone who has been a mentor and inspiration to many in the product marketing world, including yours truly, Div Manika. So uh, Div is a mindful soul and a believer in simplicity. Now, as a product marketing leader with a lot of experience that she has shaping product launches, go-to-market, customer success initiatives, and also AI-driven marketing efforts. With over 13 years of B2B SaaS experience, she has led teams and organizations to bridge the gap between product, sales, marketing, and also customer success while embracing the future of AI in product marketing. Div is not only a thought leader, but also an advocate for a customer-first mindset, having authored several books and also shared her ex expertise through numerous speaking engagements. So ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be diving into uh, pretty deep into how product, sales, marketing, and customer success teams can collaborate uh, more effectively. And we'll also explore how AI is transforming the future of product marketing. So Dev, thank you so much for joining us and I'm really excited to learn from you today. Uh, super excited to be here, Niran, and thank you for that warm introduction. Awesome, so let's dig into it. So uh, let's just begin with uh, your career, right? It's spanned many different aspects of product marketing, right from working with various teams to leveraging new technologies. So could you start by telling us a little bit about your journey and what really excites you most about product marketing today? Absolutely. And um, it's fascinating to see the journey and path that I've taken. I want to say, as of 2020, I decided I wanted to be a mentor I, um, and an explorer. And along the journey, I also became an author. And I've always been a product marketing influencer. But uh, through the PMA, I've had some great opportunities. So let me walk you through what those look like. Um, First, to ground it off, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me. So I um, have been following these three principles or values, if you will, inspire, influence, and impact. It came into existence as I was building my team, and we were trying to answer the question, how do we want to show up, and how do we hold each other accountable? So trust and credibility, extreme ownership, and results and relationships became part of that. As you can see on the screen also, um, I live in San Francisco, so this is home for me. I think this is the longest I've lived in any part of the world, uh, to be honest, uh, throughout my lifetime. And so I love to actually capture flowers. You can see some of the photos that I've taken. I got to do a photo exhibit uh, earlier this year, which in my lifetime, I never would have thought I would do a photo exhibit. I love going to museums and appreciating other people's art and the creativity. And this was my chance to kind of be on the other side um, as, a, as an exhibitor and it was definitely heartwarming uh, to have a chance to do that. And that too in a library, right? So bringing the connection between books and people um, have been fascinating. Uh, I am a little butterfly myself. I like to say I'm always breaking out of my cocoon and uh, realizing that there is more to the world than I thought was even possible. And I love food and I'm a big fan of desserts. Uh, the, the macaroons have been one that I've been striving to find the right macaroon ever since I did my uh, trip, Euro trip in uh, 2016. And this was from Paris, where I had probably the best macaroons ever in my life. And I'm always trying to find more of that uh, over the time. If you look at some of the work that I got to do, um, I started talking and I realized I wanted to be a voice for the unspoken. So I shared a little bit about my journey through stress and anxiety in my first book, which came into existence uh, on uh, a beautiful uh, winter solstice on December 21st, 2021. And this book is a journey through how I stumbled upon um, stress and anxiety, how mindfulness came into my life in 2020 how essentialism became a part of my life and also taking care of myself. I think those were things growing up, you don't really pay much attention to. You're always chasing the next thing. And I really wanted to slow down. So a broken teacup was the first of that journey of writing. I didn't know much about writing or self-publishing, but I learned through the process. Um, I also became a big advocate for authentic leadership. 
when I became a leader, I started asking the question, what kind of a leader do you want to be, Jeff? And I realized servant leadership is what resonated with me, but I also wanted to be fearless. Not, I'm never afraid of challenging the status quo, but I've always had challenges in how do you navigate the top leadership versus making sure your team is taken care of and finding the right balance between those two. So I've shared a little bit of that. Over time, since I published two books, I was like, oh, I've learned so much about self-publishing. Let me write uh, all the documents and resources that I'd captured. That became my third book. And then finally, the fourth book was when I gained the courage to write about product marketing itself. So I called it Mastering the Art and Science of Product Marketing and looking at it from the lens of PMM. But I also shared stories, right? At the end of the day, it's not the projects and the initiatives that we look at. It's people we connected with through those journeys. So there are fun stories in there and it's my way of telling my product marketing journey over the decade. This That's year, the, yeah, thank you, Niran. And this year, um, I actually uh, published this book about food because food has become a core to my existence. I know some people live to eat. Uh, oh, sorry, some people eat to live, but mm -hmm. I live to eat. Um, and I've always been a big fan of finding new restaurants or finding good food or even experimenting some recipes. So this book was actually for my mom for her birthday uh, this year, where I wanted to capture some of her recipes and things that I've learned over the years. And uh, these are one meal at a time, right? When you cook for yourself, you have to really be happy about cooking and not, not feel like it's a chore. So this became part of that practice. And then, like I said, the flowers, uh, once I had the photo exhibit, I also wanted to share uh, my journey with flowers through the world. And uh, it's also part of my healing journey. So through 2020, all of the photos that became part of that exhibit itself. So that's a little bit about uh, me outside of the conversation we're going to have today. So if you look at my career, I have three core tenants. The first and foremost has always been continuous learning. And I am really fortunate to have met you, Niren, and many other PMA scholars because it gave me the chance to kind of ground myself to say, hey, learning is a part of everything we do. Today, I spend my learning reading uh, books. I'm grateful for the public libraries that we have here in the US. Gives me a chance to read one book a week um, and not really have to think about, okay, financially, can I read one book a week, right? It gives me that freedom and flexibility. Every day I start my day uh, learning a lesson or a daily quest on Duolingo. So I'm learning about some few languages uh, through the journey of, uh, and this is part of that continuous learning that comes in. And I think it's rooted in my upbringing as well. I think I always thank my parents for giving me the toolkits and the ability to learn um, and always be a learner. I think my dad and mom are the same uh, and so are my siblings. So we have always cherished learning as a fundamental right for our own being. And coming from Kerala, where we have 100% literacy, I think we take a lot of pride in having that education uh, background itself. But then when I think about teams uh, and the way we work, whether it's a large Fortune 500 company, whether it's a startup, it all comes together to that winning together. And today we'll talk about what that winning together looks like across product, sales, marketing, and customer success. So super excited to dive in. And none of this would happen if it wasn't for the community. Whether it's me as a Google local guide, like I, I take pride in being a Google local guide. I am a level uh, 10. Uh, and wow. this is my way, my way of kind of sharing my exploration, right? I'm an explorer at heart. So I love walking the city or finding new places to go, whether it's a park, whether it's a garden, it's all there on my uh, Google local guide profile. And then having communities like the PMA, right? It, it didn't exist five years ago and it came into existence and all of these people have come together to be like, hey, we as product marketers are proud to be product marketers and we wanna create the change uh, that we could see in the world. And there are also other communities like ADP List that I've tapped into to continue to foster my mentoring and support people in their careers and journey itself. That is fantastic and really commendable, I must say. And this couldn't have been a better start to this interview because a lot of our viewers are going to get uh, a peek into who Div is, not just as a professional, but beyond the profession as a person. So I think this 
it couldn't have been a better start to this interview. So thank you so much for sharing uh, your journey so far. And now let's get into the meat of this conversation on product marketing specifically. So uh, I'd like you to begin by uh, speaking to us more on uh, product marketing. What exactly excites you about product marketing today? As you see, the function has evolved quite a bit, especially over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So today, where do you see product marketing and what really excites you about this function? I think uh, 12, 13 years ago was when I fell into love with product marketing itself. Um, but I knew I wanted to get into product marketing, but every time I would interview, and I, I think some of us can um, resonate with this, is you are, don't have the skills or the experience to actually be in product marketing. And so I started my journey uh, as a marketing communication specialist. So when I did my, so before that, uh, fast forward to maybe 15, 20 years ago, I did my um, engineering. And so as a good Indian, <laughs> I did my engineering, got my BTEC in IT. Uh, I wanted to continue to learn. So I got my master's in cybersecurity at Amrita and that was my path. And then I got a chance to come to the US to do research. Um, right. After I did that, I got to come back to do my MBA in marketing. And that was my foray into the marketing sphere, right? I knew I had a technical head, but I also wanted to bring my creativity into it. And so product marketing felt like that right mix where I could think of bringing technology to people and customers and helping them understand what is it that they want, what problems are they solving and how can we solve that? So from messaging and positioning to product and solution launches, understanding that buyer persona, thinking about market and competitive intelligence, looking at sales enablement, partner enablement, all of this became part of that equation, but it didn't start off right away, right? I did some sales enablement roles before I got into my first uh, technical product marketing role, and then I got into product marketing. So I would say there's no specific route per se to get into product marketing. Find all the adjacent paths, and some of those paths can lead you into that role. I've had team members that have come from documentation that have come from sales engineering that have come from customer success team. So uh, students come from all different forums into the PMA scholar program, as you have seen there. And, and that's the beauty of it, right? We can all come in and help challenge what exists today, help kind of shape the, the thinking and the narrative itself. And that actually led to some of the opportunities for me to grow teams and build teams, um, primarily because I came with that mindset that, that, oh, why do we do things the way we do it? And then creating frameworks and processes. So looking forward to sharing some of that today. Amazing. 